Hello and welcome to Is the Sunny Bill Williams Ban Bear? So Sunny Bill Williams copped a four week ban for his head high or red card and head high tackle um, from the second Lions test and it's come back into the news again recently. I'm Paul, the guy behind Driving Mall, and thank you very much for joining me. Uh, don't forget, you can sign up for the Driving Mall weekly newsletter above in Twitter and down below in YouTube. It's just a bit more central nice here, something. There we go. So, Sonny Bill Williams um, got copped a four match ban, and I think most people were comfortable with that level. Yes, it could have been longer, yes, it could have been shorter, but it's about the right kind of number, give or take. What has really come up um, over the last few days has been which games um, count towards that ban. And this is something that has been, uh, that from a Northern Hemisphere point of view, you think, well, it's surely, it's easy. It's the games that for the clubs, for his club and country. But in the Northern Hemisphere, players just play for a club and a country. It's just two, uh, club and international. It's just two levels, and that's pretty much it. Down in the south in New Zealand, players are registered with a club. They're then registered with um, a province, or uh, so uh, a club could be something like Ponsonby or a College Rifles. Uh, the, the province would be Auckland. Uh, then a Super Rugby franchise, <coughs> such as the Blues, and then also obviously their international side. So they're registered at four levels. Internationals rarely play club games. Uh, they generally only play them if they're coming back from injury, um, and they don't play at that many provincial games either, uh, because the Mitre 10 Cup, or if you're talking about the NRC uh, in Australia, and then in South Africa you're talking uh, about um, uh, the Curry Cup, they happen at the same time as the Rugby Championship. And so the international players generally don't play that kind of level. And this is where the problems lie, is that whilst these players are registered at four levels, they normally only play two levels uh, unless they're coming back from injury um, or missing game time for one reason or another. Um, and that's where this all, this, this all lies. We've had problems in the past uh, with, um, I can remember an All Black, uh, I think it was, was it um, Crockett or Horn, who hit uh, a player from behind in the Northern Hemisphere uh, in the November window um, and then used Super Rugby warm-up games uh, to see out his ban. And um, that caused controversy. Uh, we've seen Michael Hooper um, use a club game uh, during a bye week in Super Rugby um, to uh, to take up one of his to take out to, to be used in a ban as well. That window has been closed now. Um, Super Rugby bans uh, have to be uh, do not uh, can't be including bye weeks because when they say a four week ban, they actually mean a four game ban. Um, and so that loophole has been closed by Super Rugby, um, but these other ones haven't. So what has um, Sunny? Which games have have and haven't been included? for Sonny Bill Williams' uh, ban. Obviously, the third uh, Lions test was included. The final Blues Super Rugby game of the Super Rugby season was included. Um, then a Counties game, Counties Manukau game against North Harbour, um, which is a pre-season warm-up game, has been included. And finally, the Bledisloe Cup won, uh, so the All Blacks versus Australia has been included. And this has upset, upset, upset um, the NIU because they have not included um, a game between the All Blacks uh, and Taranaki and, uh, and Counties Manukau. Uh, they're having a uh, some sort of um, uh, it's, it's a tone to, the All Blacks playing both of those sides in one game. They're missing out. They haven't included a Counties Inter squad hit out that was put forward, um, and. Um, so those uh, games have not been uh, included in the um, and a MPC preseason game uh, as has also not been um, included either. So that's three games that, uh, that the the NRU put forward uh, as saying they should include, but they haven't been. And World Rugby uh, don't really have clear guidelines. So it's very difficult to put clear guidelines in when you have different structures. And these rules don't apply just to professional players, but they also apply to amateur players. And so the rules say um, that they need to be significant games. Just got a comment here. Uh, no, firstly, he should have got longer and pre-season or friendly games should not be included. Uh, and that's basically where I'm going to come from. I, when it says significant games, 
Um, I don't. Uh, for me, that should just be tournament games it should be included. It shouldn't include games that are uh, pre-seasons, warm-ups, or extra games that could be scheduled in. I think it should only be competition games that are included. Um, and I also think that, uh, so, so I don't think that the counties versus North Harbour game um, should be allowed to be included. Uh, uh, and I also think that um, it should be at the level or the level below um, that you should also include or at the level, all levels above and the level below that should be included. So, for example, uh, if you, uh, if it's a Super Rugby one, you shouldn't be able to include club games. You should, but you should be able to include minor ten cup games, uh, uh, and those those kind of um, those kind of things. That's, but I do understand it's difficult for World Rugby because these rules apply across all levels, amateur and professional. Uh, but the problem, and I've seen the problem that I've seen arguments about, is the inconsistency of what does and doesn't get included. And that, I think, is where the problem, where World Rugby needs to step in and say, it's time that we had some laws that are specific for the professional game and separate from the amateur game. Uh, and this would be one of them, is, is, is making it very clear def definition as what, what games can and cannot be included um, in a ban. Um, it does also uh, warrant the question, though, if you have a, say you get a red card during a pre-season game, does that mean other pre-season games should or shouldn't be allowed uh, to be included? Um, and I think in that case they probably should be, but uh, it's, say it's a grey area that's difficult. But where it's a competition game, I think the ban should only apply to competition um, games as well. Those are my opinions. Uh, clearly, New Zealand Rugby have got a different opinion because they have appealed it, um, and that appeal will be heard on the 2nd of July. So I'm recording this on Monday, uh, so that'll be on Wednesday that they will be having that hearing, and we'll see what comes out of it. What hasn't helped this is that the panel that chose this were Australian um, people, um, which and it's, it's a Bledisloe Cup game that he's missing, but I think we need to get away from uh, this kind of uh, nationalism uh, as much as we can, uh, and we there have been some comments around the uh, um, referees for the Super Rugby um, playoffs not being neutral referees. Well. It's a domestic, it's a club competition. So what is neutral, what is not neutral uh, is, is a problem there. But I get where people are coming from uh, that people, that, um, with, the, the, about that. Uh, so I think that we should need to get away from this neutrality uh, piece or, or, or nationality piece of thing on that. Um, I don't think this is just a Sonny Bill Williams thing. I think it's just he is high profile. Uh, he is the latest one. And hence, it's coming up and getting lots of coverage, especially as it's running into a Bledisloe Cup game, which is also gets a lot of coverage down here. Uh, as I say, um, Michael Hooper um, got away with one um, a year or so ago, uh, and um, we've, we've seen other cases as well. So this is not a thing about Sonny B. Williams. This is about the process that needs to be cleaned up and needs to be, more, uh, needs, needs to be clearer from world rugby. Also, I say this is the start of things where I think we, should be, we might see a divergence, or we should see a divergence in the laws between the amateur and the professional game. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to sign up. Uh, for my newsletter, link above on Twitter, down below on YouTube. Um, I will be back tomorrow with my Super Rugby predictions at around about this time. And also tomorrow evening at 8pm New Zealand time, we'll have the Hash Rugby Chat um, live YouTube show and podcast. So please do join us for that as well. Do search on iTunes uh, and SoundCloud for um, Hash Rugby Chat and do subscribe, please. Thank you for watching and uh, catch you all later.